back to lecture one. So we have the DUDT and that's it. So let's use uh, what OD solver would you like me to use? 45. 45? Okay, let's close it. OD 45, uh, DUDT, and uh, let's solve it for. Uh, does the time goes here? I think time goes here. Let's solve it for 10 time units. All right. Uh, what initial condition would you like? Let's just uh, do a link space. 0, 1, 100. Do you like that? Okay. So if we do that, it's not very interesting what the solution is, right? So let's try to plot it in a more... Uh, interesting way okay let's let's animate it just as if uh, we were uh, doing the previous example so what we do is the following so instead of solving using only 45 for the whole interval let's just uh, use it for a small time interval so let's say dt equal to 0 0.1 but this dt is actually not the same dt as what we use in the ODE time integration this is just a DT for visualization, right? OD45 is going to automatically refine my delta T. And then for T goes from 0 to DT to 10, okay? We are just going to solve, uh, oh, let's let's set our U0 to be link space of 0, 1, 100. Okay, then we are going to do the for loop. We are going to say T and U is going to OD45. We're just going to solve from 0 to dt, okay? Or, I mean, yeah, 0 to dt, and uh, u0 is my u0, all right? And then the u is going to contain uh, an array of solutions, right? So we're just going to extract the very last entry in the solution. Um, was it and this or, or the other way? I don't remember so so let's see if I get any errors so if I don't get any errors that's probably correct so let me see u0 u is a 53 by 100 double yeah so that's that's right right so 53 is probably how many time steps yeah actually 53 is the length of t that's right okay so end means the very last entry in that dimension so I'm basically uh, copying the very last entry of u and set it to my new initial condition for the for the next uh, iteration. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, I'm going to set my u zero to to uh to my initial condition. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to say u zero is the uh, last entry, and I'm going to plot. Okay, plot. Uh, what I have is uh, from 0 to point, point oh 0.01 to point 0.99, so that's my spatial domain, right? And uh, u0. I will draw now and the pause. Is it pause or sleep? Oh, I think it's pause. Pause, okay. Pause dt. So let's see how my solution is going to evolve. So this is my numerical solution. All right, for the linear advection equation. So it is looking like it's a wave going towards the right, uh, but not really very accurate, right? The, the scale is changing. The, the scale is changing. And uh, what do you actually expect the solution to look like? The solution, the initial solution, let, let me actually plot it. So, the, this is the initial solution, right? Remember, it's periodic. So, I got a sawtooth, really, that should advance towards the right. All right? But, like, what I get is kind of like a sawtooth, but, like, there is a lot of noise. The amplitude shouldn't be changing at all. So let's actually figure out why that's the case by actually looking at a slightly easier case. So instead of a sawtooth, which is actually not a periodic function, right? I mean, we force it to be periodic, which makes it a discontinuity. And the finite difference 
first thing you see in finite difference results is that finite difference hates discontinuity. All right, you don't want to use finite difference to solve anything that could appear uh, uh, that that whose solution could have discontinuities. Finite volume, which is what we study next, is uh, very good for that. But finite difference, no. So let's take a look at uh, uh, a smoother solution. So let's say x is equal to that. All right. And my u0 is going to be, let's say, cosine of x times 2 pi. So that is going to be a periodic solution. All right. OK, so let's do that. So I'm going to be doing the same thing, just selecting my history and just say evaluate. Now we see the appropriate behavior of the uh, differential equation, right? So the scheme we have coded up actually works. It just doesn't work for discontinuous functions. All right. Any questions about this? And also, I like you to see a little bit uh, about the uh, how what happens when we make the uh, scheme coarser or finer, right? So instead of having x equal to this. Let's see if what what if we put uh, one less one here. So we have a very coarse mesh. So we have the u zero initialized again, and uh, uh, we'll evaluate the same selection again. Um, oh, we should have actually uh, see close. We are gonna do this this. And uh, instead of having a fixed x, we'll just do this. Okay, from draw now to end, I'll just do that. So this is with a much coarser solution. You can actually see the artifacts of the plotting because I actually only know the value of the solution at the grid points, right? So when I plot it, MATLAB actually draws a line between every two solutions. That's why it looks uh, much jaggy. So here, we are also doing very good. All right. Another thing to look at is uh, uh, how how much slower the solution goes as we refine the grid. So if we put a much much finer grid, like a thousand grid points, uh, that's right. And uh, to see if we can still get a reasonable solution. All right. So this case uh, still didn't come up. Okay, so it showed up as the first delta t, which is 0.1 seconds, and uh, the solution has shifted exactly by 0.1, right? And now 0.2. So we see the solution now goes on much slower than before, but still it's uh, it, it kind of uh, it goes. All right. So that means we after discretization, the stiffness of the system seems to be increasing or decreasing as we refine the grid. Huh? Increasing, yes. Right, so, so uh, we can see that the time it takes to evolve is somewhat disproportion disproportional to how many grid points we have. When we have 100 grid points, uh, the solution goes pretty fast. When we have a uh, a thousand grid points, it's slowed down by more than a factor of 10, right? So what does that mean? That means the stiffness probably have increased, right? MATLAB is OD45 is then forced to take smaller time steps. What's the 